YouTube channel. I'm Kimberly. Today is Monday, November 7th. I'm coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia in the United States, and this is episode 33. Um, this is a crafty podcast where we talk mostly about knitting, and crochet, and whatever other crafts we're getting up to. I host this with my daughter, Brooke. She's 17 now. Um, this is literally during her school day that I'm recording this, so she's obviously not here right now, but she's super busy, and we'll get into that later. To all of our new viewers, thanks for stopping by. I hope you want to subscribe and, you know, apologize ahead for the hot mess. And for all of our returning viewers, you already know about the hot mess, so hopefully you like it. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Sweet Pea and Chickadee. You can find Brooke's crochet account on Instagram of chickadee.crochets. You can find me on Ravelry at K Armini, just my first initial last name. And then Brooke's Ravelry account is the Armini05. So hey guys, hey, <laughs> welcome back. I know it seems like I just posted that super long Rhinebeck one, but that took me like two weeks to edit. <laughs> so really it's been a long time between my recordings, <laughs> but that took a long time. That was, it was like three hours of recording. I cut down to like two and a half hours. And the way I edit is like, I have, I go one solid go through where it's like clipping and splicing and cutting and, you know, adding in pictures and stuff. And the second time I'm usually like just watching it once to make sure everything kept the way I edited, you know, like sometimes I'll say I'm going to take out something and then it didn't get taken out. And I'm like, oh crap, that's still in there. So I take it out or whatever, or I didn't put in a picture where I was supposed to or something. So I really had to do that almost like three times. And it was two and a half hours of <laughs> watching myself. But my friends were on it. It was so fun. So thanks to Holly, Whiskers and Stitches, and Angel from The Scrapping Angel. It was a lot of fun having that podcast with you guys. Um, I am doing this now, even though Brooke's at school, because I knew our next two weeks are super busy. We're getting into Thanksgiving. I definitely want to do another podcast before December hits. Hopefully Brooke will be on that one, but I knew I'm going to be out of town a lot in the next couple weeks, so Brooke and I wouldn't get to record. I want to hurry up and get one out there so that we had another one before event season. Um, we I won't be, I did Vlogmas last year. That is a lot of work. <laughs> so to those who do Vlogmas, wow, I have a new appreciation. It's a whole lot of work. Um, I mean, they're not very long videos, but just the fact that you have to edit it every night and anyways, so I'm not going to do that. I did love doing the, um, like showing you guys my advents every day and talking to you guys every day. I love doing that. So I think I'm going to keep that. And then what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to try it out, is that I'm going to do it on Instagram stories. So here's a little notice. If you don't have Instagram and you want to see it, just like create some random account. Who cares? Like, you know, you can come watch us. Um, but if not, it'll just be like short little stories. I'll save all the stories down and I'll highlight. I'll create. And that's where I'll open my advents show you guys what we're doing throughout the day if we're doing anything cool a lot of days it's not it's just you know just regular december um i'll keep you up to date on my advent knitting or gift knitting or whatever um and so hopefully that'll be a lot easier because editing on instagram is a lot quicker and i can just throw it up there and i'll do it as i go throughout the day so it won't be like all at once you won't have to wait for the next day so hopefully that will work out better um and there may even i've been toying with the idea of a live <laughs> lives terrify me especially with me and Brooke if we do a live because you know 17 teenage girls <laughs> I just I need to be able to edit things and so it scares me a little bit for live I'll probably just do it me first just so I can get the hang of it so like I don't know how it works I mean I've done some research but whatever so maybe a live maybe some like knitting along with me or opening my advents along with me I don't know we'll see but that's coming in December and we should have one more podcast before then where I'll like talk more about my advents. I am bringing up advents today, but like we'll all get more into advents um, in the next podcast. So let's get right into finished objects. So my foes, I do have some, um, mostly cranked socks, but also a, a um, something you never even saw me cast on because <laughs> it just happened. It just, it knit up so fast. Anyway, so here are my latest actually cranked socks. These are by Woolens and Nosh. These are for my husband. Um, so he wears like a size 15 feet, if you guys know, and I crank for him and he wants really long legs because he wears them with his suits or his khakis or dress wear for, um, work. But these came out so good and I use every last bit of this Woolen Zanosh. This is the percolated colorway. 
And I love how thick and squishy her yarn is, Michelle. I, I got this at Rhinebeck last year, <laughs> like 2021, and I'm just now doing it. Um, but I just did the regular, look how the heel looks perfectly on both, like a little bit different, but like perfectly, like I did that on purpose and I didn't. <laughs> I did. So yeah, this, so you'll, you'll probably be able to see where I, I ran out of yarn because I, it's just, it's thicker. So there's less yardage, right? So because it's heavier and, and so I shortened the leg up a little bit and I had to shorten the foot already because it's already, you know, the gauge is different. Um, and I ran out of yarn here. <laughs> this white stripe is wider than all the others, if you can see. More cream, I guess, I don't know. Um, this is like a leftover bit of Woolens and Nosh yarn from my last year's advent. Thank goodness for leftovers, because that means it's the same base, so it's a nice squishiness. Um, so that fit in perfectly, and it, looked, it like made a little mini stripe. Like I ran out on the toe. I wasn't sure I was gonna get there. I thought I was gonna run out. Like it was getting low on my cone, and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna run out back here. <laughs> and, but I only ran it right there. It's like a perfect little stripe. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I that just worked out perfectly. I can't even. But these are Damon socks. Here you try them on. So I was worried that these were gonna be too big, the feet, and they actually ended up being perfect, if not a little bit smaller. But they fit him good. So I'm like, he likes he likes his socks nice and snug. He wants them tight. So I just love this colorway. I almost wanted to get another. Um, one of this this colorway for myself <laughs> but I'm like do I need matching socks with Damon maybe <laughs> maybe I do so I just keep showing these because I, I love them so much isn't this a great oh my gosh I love these so now Damon can have them <laughs> he's all excited okay oh and I did something new with my toe so I'm using a raw you crankers a sexy four cylinder for my husband um he's got dainty ankles and legs so um, it works out for him. I do a wrapped heel. And what I did something a little different this time. I think it really closed up the corners of the heel. However, I noticed like on this side, it's like a little, I mean, it's not really open, but it looks, you know, I don't know. Crankers, aka Aquila. <laughs> maybe I'm going to DM you. Maybe I want, I want your like heel pattern. So what I did this one was I just did a regular wrapped heel and then I stopped like when you're going back, I stopped one needle short and then, then you know, resumed or whatever you want to call it. But that's what I did that helped close up because all the other wrapping methods weren't working. And I did the same wrapping method and then also stopped one needle short. And it did close up a lot, but I just noticed like on that one side, maybe it was just like that one. Maybe it's the way I, I don't know. It's not bad. It's just, you know, <laughs> not perfect. So. 64, I think I did 75 rows for the leg or 40 row hung hem. That's where you get like the double sided nice and thick. Uh, 75 row leg, regular wrap heel, not a deep heel. 75 row foot, and then there's the regular wrap toe for both of these. Normally I do like a 79 to 85 leg, but since there was less yarn, now, I, I nailed it perfectly. I can't even believe I did that. I was so proud of myself. Okay, so those are my latest. Like I just did that last weekend and I kitchenered them yesterday or last night. And then I also have some I made for Brooke. Okay, these are the socks I made for Brooke. These are Brooke's latest socks. They are more of a pinky peach in person, less orangey, more pinky, <laughs> more flamingo is what I would say. But oh, look at the speckles. Aren't those awesome? Before I get into what I did, I want to tell you the colorway. So here's the leftover bits. Um, and I got these when we went to last summer our trip, summer 2021, to Virginia Beach. At Williamsburg, we stopped at, oh, there's a yarn store there. And the owner dyes this yarn. And I think they're they're closing or they already have closed their shop. But they're, they're still dyeing yarn, I believe. But it's Robin's Promise yarn. And this colorway was Tulip Fever. Do you guys like my nails? <laughs> Just cut them down. So it is Songbird Fingering 7525. I don't know if that's even. It was a little blurry. Oh well. Okay. So Tulip Fever. I bought that then. And I actually bought it because I thought Brooke wouldn't like it. And she was like, no. <laughs> and then this year, she's like, oh, I want socks out of this. I'm like, interesting. 
I bought that for you. So for Brooks, she likes, I have a standard recipe for her. She likes to have these long socks now because she can wear them with her tennis shoes for school. Um, and so it's a 40 row hung hem, same 60 row leg, regular wrapped heel, and then a wrapped toe. Um, this one, I did not do my cool new technique, which everybody, all crankers know about except for me. And I, you could probably, I don't know if the yarn, but you can see how it's more of a gap there. You probably can't, it's probably the yarn's not letting you see it. Maybe this one's better. Maybe I'm just super, <laughs> like, look at this. But she loves them. I'm glad she loves them. And they're really pretty. It's definitely more pinky in person. But awesome. I love these. Such a good color. And like, it doesn't even pull over. It's like really nice. The speckles are amazing. Now, I know I showed these last time as finished, even though they weren't Kitchenered. But here they are Kitchenered. But I kind of wanted to pull these out again to show you guys. I mean, look awesome. Remember, these are the ones I thought were self striping and <laughs> clearly are not. But I saw um, Carrie from Stolen Minutes. Um, she did the same thing and she had messaged me about it. But I hadn't seen them until her last podcast. She did white as like the contrast color, like white, 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 I think, or white as contrasting on here somewhere. And it looked so cool. I wish I would have done that, <laughs> but these still look great. But like when it's so crazy, like a nice stabilizing color would have been like just really good with this. But yeah, there we are. And my last finished object that you didn't even see me cast on is the classic cable beanie. Yep, yeah, classic cable beanie by Loopy Mango. Um, I showed you the yarn last time, so I got it at Rhinebeck. Um, I cast it on, and it was such a quick knit because you know it's like worsted weight, but like chunky, you know, yarn, and the cables are fun. It's like every it's like a four, six row. It's a six row repeat, and only one of the rows. We were doing the cable. <laughs> so it's like super easy to memorize and you're able to tell where you are. What I did though, cause it was, it's really, I don't know, my gauge must have been off. I did all of the repeats it told me to and I was already at the length, like it looked really long and I was already at the length it was supposed to be before I even did my decreases. I was like, mm, that's a really long hat. So I pulled it back. I did two, two of this repeats less. So I only did six instead of eight for the size I did. And then I did the decreases and it's perfectly exactly the length it's supposed to be. So, phew. but it's super cute. It's still a little damp or else I'd put it on. So I was blocking it. Oh my gosh, when it blocks out, see even more soft, super soft. Um, but I wanted to, I was trying to block, not this, but like this, cause you're like, you know, on a cable where it's like loose around here, but then it's kind of tight. The farther up the hat you get, I was trying to kind of stretch this out a little bit. So it'd be a little more slouchy. Um, I don't know who's going to get this yet. I made it for Brooke. <laughs> but she didn't seem super excited about it and you know when you spend money on yarn and you make the item you want them to be excited about it so this may be going to the gift pile or I may wear it it's cute with my red hair right I may wear it or I may go into someone's Christmas gift we'll see but I really like it I think I'm gonna cast on the yellow one for my mom Grammy do you like this hat <laughs> I don't know. The, I have that bright yellow. This one was called Bubblegum. I think I brought this down. Yeah, the yarn. I bought two more skeins of the same yarn, but a different colors called Sunshine, that bright yellow color. This is in my Black Pro Magic. This is a medium size bag. This was like the Not House yarn, Not House yarn store exclusive. Um, so you get, you need two 50 gram balls. And this is how much I had left over. Like I have quite a bit left over of the second the second ball I used no the patterns by Luby Mango and also the yarn was by Luby Mango I used the dream yarn 100% cool um and it's a worsted weight and it's the colorway I think it's bubble gum yep oh you saw it already bubble gum is the color but yeah, I really like it. Nice and soft. 109 yards per ball. And I used all of one and then like half or maybe a little more than half of the other one. So I could totally like make a stripey one later or I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Because I don't want to stripe it with the yellow. I mean like I would stripe it with the yellow if I have leftovers of yellow, which I will. 
but it would need like another color with it if I'm gonna do that. But yeah, it's so nice and soft. I love it. Okay, next up are our whips, works in progress. I've cast on some new things. I have a couple things I've worked on, but I really haven't worked on a lot of my old stuff. I mean, you'll see, I'll get into it. Okay, first up my half and half triangle wrap. I'm still like, I pulled this out when we're watching TV. We went to the winery last weekend, my husband and I, um, cause we're like wine club members at a couple wineries went to our, well, cause we had like two pickups we, <laughs> we haven't done yet. So we had to go, we had to go and like relax and have wine. Anyways, so I brought, I actually brought my half and half triangle wrap, but also one of my other socks that I had one sock done from last time to cast on, but I forgot my crochet hook that I needed for the woolens and Nosh yarn because it's thicker, so I need a thicker crochet hook. So if you don't know, if I never mentioned before, <laughs> my go-to cast on method is the Chinese waitress cast on. And I use, I do the version with the crochet hook. It is so easy, so stretchy, so tidy. Like it looks very nice. It's great for edging. I love it for socks. I, I, I cast on, unless it's specified in a pattern I need a different cast on for a good reason, like not just because I just want like that one. I will always use Chinese waitress cast on with the crochet hook. And I'll link the um, tutorial I use below. Um, I love it so much. Anyway, so I couldn't cast on because I already did one sock like that. I couldn't do one sock with a different cast on. That'd be weird. So then I had to work on mine because I brought also brought my half and half triangle wrap. So I think I moved my marker last time and I can't remember if I did or not, but I think this is how far I've gotten. If not, I look super productive. So here is my half and half triangle wrap, the first side, obviously. I think that's where I was last time I podcasted. I moved it and I made this much progress. I love this pattern, super addicting. And I i know I've said this before, but garter stitch normally is not soothing to me. It's like it's soothing for a minute and it's boring and then I wanna fall asleep. But I don't know what, I think it's the, the yarn, like it's very, it's on the more woolier side, but not scratchy, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, and the fact that you do have to do a little bit of short row at the end and your rows are getting shorter each time. This is a free pattern from Pearl Soho. So, um, yeah, just getting bigger. The coat, this first colorway, which I already have some more wind up, is from Isager, Isager. Um, the alpaca too. This is the eco line because it's the undyed one. So this is alpaca, 50% alpaca, 50% wool, and it's the undyed color. Love it. it. Smells so good. Oh my gosh. And then my second color, which I was gonna grab out before and I forgot, is I know I showed it. Is this Isiger Isiger alpaca too? obviously a dyed color the same line and this color is I think I just had the number 52 it's like a plum purple so it'll be half this color and half that color that's gonna be pretty I think I'm definitely gonna make another one of these half and half wraps because they are super soothing even though I know it's long term it's a big old project it's like it's just so nice <laughs> I don't know what it is people are right I don't know so the next one I'm going to do though, this, this pattern was made for the Pearl Soho linen quill yarn. I heard it might be a little scratchy, so I didn't want to order a whole bunch if I didn't like the pattern. It's, you know, it wasn't as soothing as I thought it would be. Or um, the linen quill is extra scratchy because, you know, it's around my neck. Um, so I did like the yarn substitution website and found one that was similar. And I had it at my local yarn store, so it was easy for me to go feel it. Um, they don't have as many colorway choices, I don't believe, in this line of the Isiger, but in the linen quilt, there's so many different color choices. So I think for my next one, I'm definitely gonna order some linen quilt. Now that I don't like the pattern, and then if it ends up being too scratchy for me, I'll just gift it. Okay, hopefully nothing falls out crazy. Okay. Usually when I'm opening and messing around with the yarn, it all comes tumbling out. <laughs> So this is also in my Black Pearl Magic bag, and this is the large size. Okay. So that was an old, well, a whip I have, you've seen before. Another one you've seen before, what well, you just saw last time. 
are in my Scrappy Angel, the Kimberly pouch, this is the foxes. Aren't they so cute? Okay, so you saw me cast this on last time, so I cast this on when we were at Ryan Beck. I'm still holding my yarn, even though it's in this bag. <laughs> in um, this is by Cottontail Farm. Um, my hair, guys. Cottontail Farm, and it's they're called pockets, and they snap. They open, you know, you can snap, unsnap it from the side, <laughs> unsnap it and hook it or whatever. I just really like the print. <laughs> so I'll put it in there. But the yarn is the sock set from Bumblebee Acres which I don't know why I don't have the thing in there, but it's from Bumblebee Acres and I'm looking for a sock blocker because I have one sock done. So here's the first sock. I just like Kitchenered it today. So I need to cast on the second one. And now I've got four, four pairs of socks that have the one first sock all done. And I have not cast on any of the second pair. I tried the other day, but I forgot my crochet hook. You know how it is. So this is the Fear Street sock set from Bumblebee Acres. I did a really long cuff. I first, I, this is the contrast color it came with. I started with a pop of color. It's a cast on, then two rows, and then I started the next row. I actually first cast on with just this yarn. I thought it looked a little too busy. I wanted something to kind of anchor the top. Just my personal preference. I did a really long cuff. Like this is like almost, or it actually is like a full, like if I were to do full length socks, it's like 18 rows, I think. Like I did that on purpose. I wanted something kind of like cozy, a little up my ankle. Just, you know, wanted to. This is a um, Fish Lips Kiss Heel, one of my favorites. And then a rounded wedge toe. When I say, I know I say this a lot. Rounded wedge toe, what I do is I decrease every other round like normal until I get to 20 stitches on each needle. So, it, I'm on nine inch circular, so once it gets too small, I switch to DPNs. But really, what I use are these Addy Flexi Flips, is what I use. There's another one, there's three of them. Flexi Flips, super easy. Um, and then I decrease down to 20 on each needle, which means 40 stitches from 64 to 40. And then I decrease every round, um, not every other, so I decrease every round until I get to 12 stitches on each needle, which means I have 24 stitches. And then I Kitchener. So I Kitchener at 12, 24 stitches total, 12 on each needle. I, a lot of people I see when I'm like six or eight and I, I do it at 12, I don't know. I, I just like it and I like the roundedness of it and it's a shorter toe. Plus if you're using contrast color, you don't use as much yarn. <laughs> so it's kind of nice. But yeah, so that's my, I love how it turned out. It looked really crazy in the beginning, which of course it's crazy, but I always love how like when you get the full sock, it looks like, I don't know, just looks more grounded, I guess. This is like, I have a little stitch marker here, just marking. I didn't mark every row because I was measuring. So it's a, this is the coquette base of her. So it's like a little plumper of yarn. So I was not really counting. I was measuring. I only need to count for the next sock. So this is just um, marking my row 60. <laughs> But it's also easier when you're using contrast colors because then I only have to count from here to here when I go back. That's easy. It's always hard to be like, where does the heel end and where am I starting the toe? But when it's contrasting, it's quite evident where it's starting. So it's nice. So I need to cast on the next one. Um, I need to. I, I like to have a sock, at least one sock, ready to grab. So I definitely need to get something cast on like tonight. But we're like super busy. I know I'll mention, I'll talk more about that later of like what we're, what we're all doing. It's uh, man, no, October, November, December. Because October we start with like Brooke's birthday and we always have Ryan back and then like my son's has like his parent weekend for school. It's just a lot going on. Like Brooke's homecoming. <laughs> and then November, you know, all the holidays and we got more travel plans and then December. Man, I mean, it's a good kind of busy, but so. All right, now I've got two new cast-ons besides my hat that I already completed. So first up, I started in my muscle bra for my friend Angel from the Scrappy Angel. It's in my Mountain State Stitches bag. I purchased this bag specifically to be my muscle bra hat bag because I make so many. I think this is number seven, eight. I can't remember. All right, so 
She gifted me a quilt and I'm making her a muscle bar with the yarn she gave me. I feel like I got the better end of the deal. <laughs> That's what happens. Um, okay, so she wants it made out of the Yarnable um, Born to be Mild colorway, which I also have. And then once I saw it, wow, I'm like, oh, maybe I want a muscle bar made out of this. I just cast on last night. Here's the skein for the cake. I cast on last night and I today I just finished the increases. So now I'm working on the body. Like I just finished the increases. And there it is. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. I love that it's like super neutral, but also like a pop of that blue. It's so pretty. And I really like my new cast on. So I tried a new um like invisible disappearing whole loop cast on method um because i always try i i keep changing so like the ones i've been trying were awful fiddly and i was trying to just try different ones to find which one i like better and i found a tutorial by brooklyn tweed it was so much easier to do the disappearing loop and i think it's so much more secure and better in the middle we use that for a lot of different things but um i'll link it down below so you guys can look at it i love it now that's, that's all i'm gonna do for disappearing loop what's going on here this is my um, whiskers and stitches. I use this for all my muscle burrows stitch marker. So yeah, I really like this. So I always start out, cause you can do this in magic loop. Since I like to use 16 inch circulars, um, I start out on DPNs. So like, which DPNs? Just like wooden, just DPNs. I cast on, do increases, this is an adult large size, so I increased up to like the 30 in each section, and then I went ahead and switched it over to the circular needles, and now I'm flying. But yeah, there we are for that, and that's the Muscle Bra Hat by Isolde the Teague. Oh my goodness, I've got stitch markers everywhere. Okay, my last, let me make sure. Oh, I didn't bring them down one of them. Okay, so my last, um, whip that I have to show you. It's a new cast on as well. It's in my Rebecca pouch um, by also the Scrappy Angel. Oh, and don't forget, she's having a sale coming up, 20% off. So I'll have all that information down below. But yeah, not cute little skunk. Okay, so I am doing the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits and I'm using the leftovers. Oh, I bumped that, sorry. And I'm using the leftovers from my last year's Woolens and Nosh Advent 2021. So I have, I think there's like a whole nother repeat in here or something. And that's just like, got two of them. I had to go in there and untangle them. Um, and I had gone and bought like last, cause I saw, actually I saw Michelle from Woolens and Nosh do this. And I was like, I'm going to do that with my leftovers because you know, what else are you going to use self-driving? I already have socks. So she had paired it, held it double with some more bare yarn. So I went ahead and ordered from her shop, like last spring, maybe winter, a 50 gram skein of her bare color, because that was the contrasting color for those socks. I even have a little bit left. So that was a contrasting color for the socks. And it's the stripe in between. Because Woolen's a notch advent, if you don't know, it's like a stripe a day, like those stripe a day socks. But in between each color is a base color so like this last year's was white um and so there's a white strip like a one row of white in between each color so it was really cool because you knit until you get to the white and then you stop knitting and it came in this bag already wound up ready to go so you never saw the colors until it was coming out of your bag to go onto your socks it was so cool so that it would pull out and when the white like the color ran out and it was a white you stopped so you didn't see tomorrow's color so it was like you were super surprised each day so I'm doing the mittens and I'm holding it double with this. So that makes it a um, DK, obviously. So I just started, still doing the cuff. So it's held double, so it's even like a nice marled look. It's going through the stripes. Um, I'm doing, so it's a DK, because uh, the, the pattern is free. It's an amazing pattern. Not only is it free, but it gives you a, how to do it in all different weights of yarn. So since, my, since I'm holding, Two fingering symbols, DK. I'm doing the DK pattern. 
Um, I'm doing, get to do four rows for the cuff. I'm following the pattern exactly. So I'm doing four rows for the cuff because I do like a long cuff anyways. And I'm at three inches. So I just need one more inch. You start off one by one ribbing. And then um, I'm, on th I'm, on, I'm just using nine inch circulars. Um, this is a size three, US three. And I'll switch over to a US five, I believe, once the like hand starts. But they're just full on mittens. It's gonna be so cute. And I love the fact that I'm using leftovers even though I did purchase this extra thing. But I love that I'm using all my leftovers. I like, I love that about myself. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> even though everyone else did it and I'm just copying them. But I feel, cause a lot of times, I love those people that like, they'll use their leftovers right away after a project. And I'm always so envious, like, wow, that's really cool. So I wanna start something else usually. But like, I love using up leftovers. I feel so like, I don't know, like on top of things. <laughs> like usually when I was cranking socks and I use leftovers from one sock for like the heels and toes of another, I feel super like on top of it. So I obviously I'll make two of these and I'm almost done with the cuff and then I'll get to the body. And I'm loving that I'm making all these like easy on the go projects because we have a lot of traveling, well, just a little bit of traveling coming up. And so it'll be easy for me to take places with me. So that'll be nice. I think that's it for, oh, I did want to talk about, so I didn't bring it down because it's really the same. I haven't worked on it. So my mystery knit along, I hadn't worked on it. And then clue, cause it was like what, clue three. And I still was on clue one, still on clue one, halfway, well, over halfway through clue one. My colors are amazing. I love my colors. Um, and then I saw clue four drop and then I wasn't going to look, but then I heard some kind of rumblings. I'm like, I'll just be, I'm so far behind. What's it matter? Well, and then I looked at it. I'm like, I just don't know <laughs> because love Stephen West shawls. They're amazing and huge and pieces of art. So if I'm not going to wear, like if I don't see myself wearing a shape, I want to be able to display it somehow. And I couldn't see, I mean, you probably can, but I couldn't see an easy way of like hanging out on my wall without being too like <laughs> mounting it basically. So I like throwing things up on my wall that I can easily unhook and wear. And that one, the shape is inter it's interesting. I don't, I don't know. It's just not for me maybe. I heard someone say it looked like a, like a Star Trek ship, which it does. I thought it looked like the shape of a bat, <laughs> like a flying bat, like a Halloween one. I just don't know. There's a lot of aspects about it that I like, but I just don't see myself really wearing it. And then I, I just loved my yarn so much that I'm like, do I want this just to, you know what I mean? I don't think I'm going to wear the shape. The way you would need to wear it, I don't wear my shawls that way. Even though I might think I will, I will never. <laughs> kind of like, you know, I'll, I'll wear this with dresses. I don't wear dresses. Why do I say that? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so I don't, I haven't ripped it out yet. I haven't frogged it, but cause I see a lot of other people, I think it's the colors too. And I love my colors. So I know it would look good with my colors. I know it would look nice, but would I wear that shape? And also if I can't wear it, I don't think I can throw it up on my wall easily. I feel bad even saying this, but I just don't. But I was, you know, the yarn's expensive. I love the yarn I picked. So I'm like, oh, should I just pull it out and use it for something else? Because I can definitely find things to do that with. And I may even do a, a different Stephen West shawl. I may do that. There's a lot. There's a new one coming out. It wouldn't be those same colors. So I would only need like, I think one skein of each. But oh, there's a whole bunch of new ones coming out and the old ones I want to do. So maybe I'll just do a different Stephen West shawl. Then I won't feel so bad. <laughs> but I don't know, man. So that's my predicament. I'm probably probably not gonna make it but I'll pull it out and maybe make something else I do love my yarn combo my colors are great so yeah <laughs> tell me comment below what do you guys think about it did you guys I don't know because if I would have been on time like if I would have knit the whole thing up to like clue three and saw clue four I mean I'll, I wish I would have finished it at that point it's like there's so many hours in but I'm only halfway through clue one like what there's no harm in pulling it out at this point like, I don't feel as like I lost a whole bunch of my life <laughs> time. So, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. That's it for my works in progress, for my whips. So, acquisitions. And, you know, I do have a little bit. Yarnable. Let me get that out there. Because I think I missed the last couple of Yarnables showing you guys. And I set them aside. I was going to show you. But then I'm like, you guys have seen them. 
all the other podcasters that get yarnables have shown you. So I'm not going to bore you with that. But I am going to show you November's. Okay. So. Yarnable for November. Life is Gouda is brought to you by good food, good laughs, and gatherings with good friends. There's a whole bunch of good extras. I love the extras here. And here is the color. I'm showing you guys because I wanted to make these into socks for Damon. But I had to show you guys first before I create them. Could these be a great color for Damon? Oop. A little strain from the bag. Isn't that great? So life is Gouda. Obviously a cheese reference. Um, the extras, one of them was a sock pattern. I already got that in my email. The next was this monster knits and look, it's a piece of cheese. Isn't that the cutest? Oh my gosh. I wanted these match. And then I think I already got the pattern. Yes. Oh, and the top pattern was charcuterie anyone um, by Crystal Tinas. If you guys want to find that on Ravelry. And then, which I haven't even looked at these yet. These are the cheese knives by small. That's, that's actually here. If you, have, if you have kids in the room, this is what, this is who it's by. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't trust people who don't like cheese. Come to this cute box. I haven't, I knew there's cheese knives in here. I just haven't opened it. <gasps> wow. Everything is fine. Wine and cheese. Those are nice. Man, that's a good extra. On top of all the other stuff. So yeah. Oh, and did you guys see that, um, speaking of monthly boxes, um, Arkansas Yarn Co. has opened up their boxes, their monthly subscription boxes. I've noticed they also have really great extras in yarn and stuff. And you can get like a sparkle base, which I might get. And I keep putting it, like I'm going to go pay for it, but they don't take PayPal. You have to have your credit card. And I never have my, or debit card. I never have my card with me. So I really hope I get that done before they close. So. We'll see. So then last week I headed to my local yarn store. Um, Brooke had run, won a raffle during their like grand reopening. So I had to go pick up for Brooke. Um, and then of course I wanted to stop in and get um, the ginger, the new West Yorkshire Spinner colorway for 2022. And it's gingerbread is the colorway, of course. And then while I was there, I also grabbed these two colors again, which I did have in my stash, but I had made socks, gift knitted socks for my um, BFF and her mom. So I'm like, and at first I'm like, yeah, no big deal. I'm like, no, I think I do actually want socks in all the colors. So I'm going to, for my own collection. So I went and got them as well. They happen to have them. This was candy cane. I do not remember which year this was. Self-striping. This one's like more like patterning, I think and self striping. This is the holly berry. Super pretty. So yeah, so now I got all three of these West Yorkshire spinners. And then I hadn't been there in a while. <laughs> so what happens? I go in for one thing. And our yarn store is now carrying Northwoods fibers, which I was really excited about. I have like one of their self striping colorways and it is the Tweety of the like country Christmas or something like that. And I love it. So, but I saw this. Oh my goodness. Look at it. Isn't that lovely? So this colorway is called gray bow. This is like a very light gray. So it's a gray bow, gray bow on their Aspen fingering 7525. I do not know from Wisconsin. I do not know what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe a hat or something. I always say that. I have too many hats. I'll probably start selling hats. <laughs> because I, just, I keep, I love making them. And then they just sit there. All sad. And then I saw this month's um, Dream in Color pop-up. Because they get the pop-up club there. This is this month's November 2022 on their Smooshy Cashmere base. So it's 70 2010 with cashmere nylon. But I love, I was thinking this for socks because it would be very delicate, like, you know, mostly a tonal with like some speckles in there. But I don't know. Like a very nice patterned sock, like where you can do patterned. 
And then I also saw this Dream in Color, which I've been eyeing for a while, so I decided to go ahead and get it. This is the October 2021 Club, which I thought it was this October, like I for last month's. And then luckily, Shelly got it, who's the, she was working there, and she caught it from, she's like, oh, this is 2021. And then she's like, do you want me to check to make sure you didn't already have it? I'm like, yes, please, because they can look it up in their system to see if I've already bought it. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And I hadn't bought it. Because you know I've done that before, where I bought it separately and been like, oh yeah, I already have this. So I really like this. So this will be something I probably knit on for next Halloween. But also on the smooshy cashmere. Love that color. So those are three I got on top of my West Yorkshire spinners. But I'm like totally drawn with like these light colors. Oh my goodness. I don't know what's wrong. I love it. Okay. So that is all I purchased so far, except for Advents, and I'll get to that in a little bit um, in my future plans. One of my future plans I wanted to talk to you about is that here I cranked, or I cranked, I put this on the cone to crank on my machine, my sock knitting machine, my Earlbacher Gearheart. This is a great, I was going to make Halloween socks, and it's Ancient Arts Yarn. Let me go ahead and see the price tag. Ancient Art Yarns, and it's their, their Sock Nato base. It's an 80 20. Um, and it's the Harlequin Cat, is the colorway. I think they're out of Canada, I want to say. Right? Yep, made in hand dyed in Canada. Okay, so I got this to make really cool Halloween socks. Now, I was just cranking it last weekend to gauge it because you crank like a tube in, in different tensions to see which tension is the best for the yarn. Um, and so I started to do that, and then I realized I didn't think I liked it the way it was. So this is what it came out as. I mean, normally my gauge tubes are a lot, like, half, like, but I stopped. So I totally thought it was going to pool. I just don't know if I like this pool as much as I think it can be. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hat instead, like a really cool Halloween color hat. And so if I switch up the diameter, obviously, um, it should change the pooling or, you know, you know how that works. So not, not, I mean, it's not bad. I just think it could be cooler with the colors. I don't know. And I don't know if I'm gonna either hand knit this as a hat or I'm gonna crank it because I'm definitely going to get busy. It will cut out my new river in the mail. I'm going to start with the ripper machine, the ripper dial, not the ripper machine. So I'm using the ripper dial so I can do rib socks for my husband, also ribbed hats. So I might like use this like a demo to like make it ribbed, like just a regular ribbed hat, slouchy hat. We'll see how that works. And then if, if, if I don't like it as a hat, I didn't waste like, you know, weeks making a hat or days making a hat. I'll just have cranked it and be like, oh yeah, I don't, it looks better as a sock. That way it'll be faster. So that was my first future plan. My second future plan, which I've mentioned like the past three or four podcasts, is Brooke's Mondry and Pullover by Two of Wands. I have the exact kit that she used with Lion Brand. I have all of it ready to make Brooke. It's a chunky sweater. It will not take me that long to do. Now that it's cooler, I can definitely do it. Although this weekend and today it was in the 70s, so it's not that cool. But it's going to get cold here like the next week or two. Don't, and I was going to cast it on last weekend, actually. But then I was like... I'm going to Puerto Rico this week. <laughs> so my husband has a conference. He travels a lot for work. Um, he's got a conference actually in Puerto Rico this week. Um, and like a month ago, he's like, do you want to go to Puerto Rico for this conference? I was like, okay. <laughs> so we use like his airline miles and I'm flying there for free and I'm staying in his hotel room. And so I get to relax in a nice warm, it's like 80 degrees during the day. 70 at night, get to relax by the beach, drink cocktails, <laughs> knit, and go to dinner at night. I mean, for five days. So I'm really excited about it. But I didn't want to cast on a chunky sweater because I was not going to bring a chunky sweater with me. I could have obviously put it in my luggage, like my checked luggage, because it's big. But I am not going to want to knit on a big, bulky, chunky, you know, yarn at the beach. It'll just be too warm. So, and I knew, you know, in the beginning when you cast on a sweater, it's super fun. It's addicting. I didn't want to stop and I knew I wouldn't want to stop. So I'm going to wait till after I get back from Puerto Rico to go ahead and cast on that sweater. And 
Then next week we have my son is having his ring figure ceremony. He goes to VMI, which is Virginia Military Institute, which is a military college. And if he's in his third year, which means he's his second, <laughs> which is a junior, um, but they call them seconds and the seniors are first. Um, and this is when they go get their um, class ring. So it's a very huge ceremony. They've earned this. It's a, it's a hu huge deal. So that's next week. And then we get to bring them home for Thanksgiving break. So that'll be really fun. So I'm glad I really have some like easy to carry and easy to transport projects on the go and tons of socks. So I have lots to sit on in the car or on the plane or wherever we're going. His college is only like two and a half hours away from us, thank goodness. So we just drive there and we're staying the night in a hotel. We have like a little bed and breakfast. So that'll be fun. My other future plan, I know I showed you guys last time, you're going to hear the crinkles, is the pieces wrap by Rain Knitwear. And I'm using my botanical yarn sets that I got from Woolen Folk. I forgot what it's called. But here's, I, get, I can show you closer now. Here is the first set. Isn't that pretty? So if you look at the pieces wrap, it's faded on the edges and then there's stripes, blocked stripes going different ways in the middle. This is gonna be the outside fading. And then this will be the inside stripes part of them. Now, this is only 20 minis. I need 22, so I need two more. So I'm gonna grab a completely different colors set. I, I don't want it to look fady in the middle. So I'm gonna like separate these to make it more look more like stripes. And then also include a couple other bright colors, like maybe like a bright blue of some shade, either teal or turquoisey. And then, I don't know what else. I can't decide. Maybe a, maybe like a golden color, like a mustardy color or something. Um, that'll kind of throw that in there. And maybe I'll take a couple of these out and do a couple more colors. Or we'll see how we'll see how it looks up. So I'm really excited about that. And I, I'm trying that again because I know I said I would probably do that after the holidays. And I may still do. Because I do have Advent knitting coming up. However, I really want to. But I love this yarn. I really want to work on it. So... I may end up casting that on as well. <laughs> like during Advent knitting, the end of this month, who knows? I'm more of a work on what you wanna work on at the time, unless I have a deadline kind of person. And I do have a deadline. I do have a Christmas gift knit I'm making for my sister. It is not done. I have not worked on it since last month, which is why I start things early. Um, but So I need to get, I'll probably bring that with me to Puerto Rico as well. Just, I just need to get that done. Cause she needs help for this Christmas. Cause she wanted it last Christmas. <laughs> So, he needs to get done. Um, okay, so Advents. I know, okay. I'm not going to talk about, like, Advent patterns yet. I'll do more of that at the next podcast because I really haven't thought about it. I'll probably go back and look at what I, like, possibilities I had pulled aside from last year. And I know there's a lot of great patterns that are coming out for this year. Um, but I wanted to talk about the Advents I have gotten or I've ordered. Some I've already, I've already received. And then a couple others I've gotten shipping notifications for. So, it's just very exciting. Um, so my first advent is hedgehog fibers. I was super excited about that. I saw them in Ireland when we got there for the summertime. They're so nice and I love their yarn so much. And so, and that one's already arrived and it comes in like this. I'll show you guys what they come in later, but it comes like a box. We actually have to poke the hole to get the yarn out. It's really cool for all the different days. That is just 20, I believe it's just 24 mini skeins and that's it. Then I just ordered for another full advent. I just ordered yesterday. I couldn't help myself. Ruby and Roses still had advents left over. And I saw her advent last year. And I loved every single one of them. All the like minis. I love them. And so I saw. I just. I caved. So I was only going to do one main. Like main. Because I had three last year. It was totally a lot. Not, it was too much. <laughs> I mean I kept up. I kept up with the knitting just fine. But. It was a lot financially, maybe. <laughs> but then I was like, I really, I really want to try her yarn. I have never tried her yarn before, so I'm gonna do this advent. So I got the advent with the full skein option, so that's coming. Um, I know she set out a whole bunch of advents, but I just ordered it as like an extra. So like she had done up extras. So I'm ordering it as like her extra. Um, I also got the Woolens and Nosh advent for this year. I loved last year. I'm super excited about this year. I've already got it in the mail. 
I'm super excited about this. I haven't like looked in, you don't look at it, but I've already like, I can see what, like the, like the contrast color is. It's so pretty. Um, and then I went ahead and ordered Freckled Whimsies, um, Stripe a Day Socks Advent. I got hers last year and you may be saying, Kim, you got Freckled Whimsy last year? We never saw you knit that up and you would be correct because <laughs> I did order it, but I was already doing so much Advent knitting. I'm like, I'll just keep it. So I never opened it. So I have it in the bag still. And, and I just noticed it the other day. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm not going to get 2022 because I haven't even knit 2021. Then I saw the bag, the 2021 bag, just like last weekend. I'm like, oh, but I mean, <laughs> should I get 2022 just to have, then I can have both. So I went ahead and ordered. She only had like a few left and I only had like, I didn't get any of the, like, I had to just take what they had left. And it was, I think, a full skein option. It hadn't been split. But I think it definitely comes with a mini, I think. So anyways, so I'm <laughs> excited about that. So I'm getting that. And who knows if I'll knit that? And who knows? I'll probably want to knit last year's first. I don't know. Who knows with me? So also, my friend Angel from the Scrappy Angel, we are we went in on the Mandy's Makings Share a Pair advent that went out, like, what, last spring? Um, so she just told me that that just shipped. So, and that's based off of the holiday Christmas movie, which I love. We both love that movie. And so we went in on that together and we're splitting that one. And then also Zebra Yarns, which I just got the notification that it shipped today. She does a 12 days of Christmas, right? Yeah. 12 days of Christmas stripe a day sock. So it's 12 stripes for this whole sock. So they're the thicker stripes. And, um, I did hers last year and it's really great. And hers does the 12 days of Christmas. So it starts on Christmas. So you knit the first stripe on Christmas. So it's really great. So you'll just finish off all my other stripe a day Christmas socks. And then after that, you get to knit the next 12 days. So it's really cool. Um, so I'm really excited. I loved my socks from last year. And I think that's it. <laughs> so really, as of like a couple days ago, I only had I mean, like most of them, but I just ordered Ruby's, Ruby and Roses and Freckle Whimsy are my latest. And I was hoping that Pearl Smith was going to do another advent like they did last year for stitch markers. I really liked the stitch markers I got last year. And I ordered whatever she had left. And it was like a 12 day. And I really wanted to get the, like the full advent this year. But I don't know if she did it. Either that or I missed it or it hasn't come out yet. I must have missed it or she's not doing it. I was going to message her and see if she's still doing it because I definitely wanted that. I, I use those stitch markers a lot. They're very smooth. They don't catch on anything. And they're pretty without being overly dangly where they don't get in the way of like projects and stuff, which I like too. Because sometimes I don't use the super dangly ones only as like progress holders because they get, you know, tangled up and stuff. And now for watching and reading, I don't, I haven't read. I don't even know why I keep using it. I use, I use the reading part of section for Brooke whenever she's here to talk about her books. <laughs> I love to read. Love. I have so many books. But, like, I can only have so many hobbies at a time. I did start playing um, games again with my husband. Oh, my gosh. Like, video games. So, I always – I hardly ever play games because it's super addicting for me. And I know that about myself. <laughs> And so once I start playing a game I love, I'll like basically play it until I'm done. Like it's, I beat it and then I have to like take a break and then I like try to not play games because I get it's super addictive. I think I was a gamer in my past life or something because I get super addicted. So, and then like nothing else gets accomplished. But so I, my husband's been like begging me to play ESO with him, which is Elder Scrolls Online because you can like play, you know, as a, with other people. And anyways, he got, he finally, I finally caved and it's actually really fun. And like, I met all of his gamer, well, not all of them, but a lot of his gamer friends. And so they were all really nice. And so that's fun. I've been doing that a lot. And actually I get knitting done too. It's like whenever it's like a load screen or we're waiting for something or whatever, I'm like knitting. And I actually knit like that entire Fear Street sock, like the whole foot, like in a couple days off of that, like just, that's actually kind of handy. And my cable hat, I was working on that too in between load screens and so it's really easy. Something I can just grab and knit on a little bit. That was nice. That you can do two things at once. I know people read and knit. I don't know how they do that. It would have to be a knitting. I don't know. Like actually read and knit. I know audiobooks, but I can only do some audio. I need I need to read it. The voices sometimes. I'm not a fan of. But I don't know. But yeah, anyway, so for watching. 
Brooke and I watched the new Halloween movie on Halloween. I've been saving the new Halloween movie to watch on Halloween. So I was super excited. I knew it was the last one. I'm a big horror movie person. And it just, it was, I was really disappointed in the plots. Like the, you know, the acting was great. Everybody was great. Jamie Lee Curtis was great. But like the plot, they completely changed. Like that's the whole great thing about Halloween is that it's the same plot every time, just different people and different events. But it's the same basic plot, right? It's a Halloween movie. And they changed it. You can't just, and it was, a, this was the last movie. You can't change it on the last movie. And it was like, oh. They should have just ended it with last year, honestly. I just, I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She did really great, but oh, broke my little Halloween heart. But anyways, Brooke and I are also really excited for Hallmark Christmas movies are coming out. I haven't even looked to see. They probably already have started, but I need to get on that because I usually set my cable to record. We literally have cable for like the Super Bowl and Hallmark movies. <laughs> and like, that's pretty much it. So I need to go ahead and get those recorded so we have those ready. And when my mom gets here for Christmas, we all watch those. It's really fun. I have been trying to get caught up on my podcast, but I've just been, if I'm in here cranking on socks, I don't watch podcasts because I want to look at the podcast. So I want to see what they're holding up and I can't, if I can't lose focus when I'm cranking. Um, but I'll, I'll watch like Investigation Discovery or, you know, some kind of true crime doc documentary because I don't really need to look at that. I just listen to it. But um I'm trying to get caught from all my favorites. I'm still not there yet. <laughs> so if you see late comments, I know I think I, I commented on somebody's from like a while ago, like Aquila maybe or the Lefty Knitter podcast or was it Rose Opal? I commented on someone's like from a couple ago. I'm like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just haven't watched them in a while. But yeah, so I have a lot of plans coming up. Um, wanted to go ahead and get this podcast out there really quick. I'll probably edit this while I'm in Puerto Rico. I know, sad me. <laughs> and get this up on the YouTubes. Um, and then we, I'm trying to get another one recorded with Brooke before Advent starts. So I want to like go through my Advent patterns. Sometimes I'm still deciding on day one and two, which Advent, I think I did that last year, but then I'll show that on my Instagram stories. So that's how I'm going to do vlogmas on my Instagram stories. I'm actually super excited about it. Cause it'll be a lot of fun. I love the video part. I love talking to you guys. I love showing you guys everything. It was just the, you know, the upload time for downloading everything and then editing and then, ugh. It was just a lot. This will be a lot easier, I think. So hopefully, I'm sorry if you guys don't have Instagram. You can go make a little account and just, you know, they're free. And you don't have to, like, post on it. You can just watch. Or, you know, I will definitely have podcasts in December. That's another thing. So when I was doing Vlogmas, we couldn't podcast as well. Just too much work. So I do plan on having a couple podcasts in December. It definitely won, hopefully, too, in December. So then if you miss out on all the Instagram vlogmases, I'll still be able to show you my advents and also my advent knitting and my gift knitting. And all of that will be in the podcast. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I know that last video was super long, two and a half hours. I think a lot of people had to pause and come back, which, hello, took me two weeks to do it. So I understand. Um, and I'll go ahead and I will see you at the next podcast in a couple weeks. Bye.